Hey guys, in this video, we're talking about negative externalities and specifically getting our market actors to internalize these negative externalities. Now, we're also going to be talking about if we can't get the optimal per unit tax and the optimal per unit tax is a per unit tax equal to the size of the per unit externality. That's your optimal per unit tax. That will get rid of all the dead weight loss associated with the externality. But if you can't get that, is it okay if we tax a little bit too much or a little bit too little? And the answer is yes. As long as your per unit tax is not more than 2x, two times the size of the per unit externality, you're going to do more good than harm. You're going to decrease dead weight loss, increase social surplus. However, if your per unit tax is more than 2x, two times your negative per unit externality, you're going to do more harm than good. Your dead weight loss is going to increase and your social surplus is actually going to decrease. Okay, so let's get to it. In this graph that you see right here, we have a negative externality from production. What this means is when the good is being produced, somebody other than the producer or consumer is incurring a cost, okay? There's this external cost that what we call third parties, and third parties means anybody but the market actors are incurring, okay? So again, negative externality from production, the way that we can see that is the MSC, the marginal social cost, the marginal total cost is greater than the marginal private Private cost. The marginal private cost is just the cost that the producers are incurring. The marginal social cost has all the costs the producers are incurring, plus the additional cost third parties are incurring. Okay, so again, negative externality from production. And one of the things we want to see right off the bat, guys, is what would the market do left alone? A situation that this externality is not being internalized by the market actors. Well, they would make decisions based on their private cost and private benefit. And by the way, let's go ahead and put a supply curve because suppliers make decisions based on their private cost. And let's go ahead and put demand curve because demanders make decisions based on their private benefits. So our market actors, okay, would give us a result where this was Q market right there. But what is Q op? What's the optimal amount of this good that we would like to have produced based on the total cost, societal cost, and total benefit, societal benefit that this good um, has associated with it? And the answer is, well, I go right here to the intersection of my marginal social cost and my marginal social benefit curve. This line, guys, is doing double work. It's both the private um, benefit and the social benefit. But I go to the intersection of my MSC and MSB, and that is my Q op. That's the optimum amount of the good that we want to have produced. So again, the market would over allocate, the market left alone that is, would over allocate resources to production of this good. Suppliers and demanders making decentralized decisions based on their private interest would give us a result where the market would over allocate resources to production of the good. So what should we do? Well, we should get those market actors to internalize these external costs. And how can we do that? With a per unit tax. Per unit taxes only impact the market participants, right? It's a tax on the market participants. It's going to be paid by the market participants, the suppliers and demanders. So what you say is, oh, we recognize there's this externality. We society, i.e. maybe we could even say government, right? Recognizes there's this externality. We want the market participants to internalize this externality, to incur, to internalize the cost so we can levy a tax, okay? Now, I'm going to do both, use this thing called a tax wedge, and I'm going to shift the curve at two different times in the video. I'm going to start with a tax wedge. I have many videos here at Econ Busters, or we have many videos here at Econ Busters about tax wedges. We prefer that as our modeling tool when doing taxes. But I'm also going to talk a little bit about shifting curves because it might help us out. But let me start with the tax wedge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a tax, a per unit tax that's just too small. We want the per unit tax to be that large, but that's all the size of tax I'm going to put in. But before I get going too far, when you're using a tax wedge, remember, 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 focus on the P curves when you put that tax wedge in, okay? Because again, the tax is being incurred by the market participants and the market participants lines are those P curves. So I'm ignoring this red one, right? So I'm going to bring that tax wedge in right there. Now, what that's going to do, it's too small of a tax. It is going to decrease the quantity supplied and the quantity demanded. So we are going to get a reduction in how much 
that we're going to produce, okay, which is a good thing and is going to eliminate some dead weight loss. Again, it was too small, but I wanted you to see the amount of dead weight loss that we're going to get rid of. So if I wanted to show you the dead weight loss that we would uh, that would result from the market left alone, I focus on the S curves. Again, tax wedge, focus on the P curves. Dead weight loss, focus on the S curves, the societal curves. So if we produced all the way to here, I'm going to do that right there. And this area right here would have been the dead weight loss if we didn't do anything. But we put in that tax that's too small. Well, take a look at this. We're gonna get rid of quite a bit of the dead weight loss, right? It was this, maybe I should do it this way. It was this entire triangle right there. In fact, I'm gonna fill it in just, just so we can kind of get a little bit better idea, okay? So that whole part would have been the dead weight loss. Now, because of that tax, we're only going to produce two right here. Again, a tax we would call too small. It's not optimal. It's not equal to the per unit externality. But we would get rid of quite a bit of, all right, that dead weight loss. All right. In fact, I'm not even sure that tax was half the right size, but it probably got rid of more than half the dead weight loss, which is an important takeaway. All right. Now, we make the tax a little bit bigger. All right, so now it's bigger. It's still not the size of the per unit externality. The size of the per unit externality is the vertical distance between the PC and the SC, right? Between the marginal private cost and the marginal social cost. That's the size of the negative externality. Our tax still isn't big enough, but boy, it takes care of a lot more dead weight loss. We have gotten rid of way more now than half of the dead weight loss, but the tax is still too small. Now, again, the optimal tax would be right there, right? That would be the optimal tax. If that was the case, we would have brought that quantity all the way back to Q opt, and that would equal Q tax. Again, that would be a per unit tax equal to the size of the per unit externality. And guess what? Absolutely zero dead weight loss. We we're going to maximize social surplus. But how about if our tax was too big? If our tax was too big, well, what's too big? That tax is too big. Here is my size of my negative externality, but we taxed a little bit too much. Again, notice my dots that make up my tax wedge are still on the P curves, right? So that wedge is still in between the two P curves that are out there. Now, what would happen in this case? We would get some dead weight loss. How much dead weight loss would we get? We would now incur this triangle right there. But you can see, if you had a tax, it looks like maybe 33% too big, 133%, I guess you might say, of the per unit externality. We are getting rid of a lot of the dead weight loss, right? It used to be this whole triangle right there. That is a much smaller amount, right? In fact, if we even made it like 1.5, right, times the per unit externality, that might even be more than 1.5. This again is the size of the per unit externality. That might be more than half of that. So I might be more than 1.5. Yes, the dead weight loss is going to increase, but you can still see this triangle right here is much smaller than that, right? In fact, I would dare say that if you actually did the areas of these triangles, you've probably, or pretty much for sure, gotten rid of more than half of the dead weight loss. You're still doing more good than harm. You're still decreasing dead weight loss in total and increasing social surplus in total. Now, here is the deal. Double that size, right? So I would need that to be like about right there. So if you double the size of the per unit externality with your tax, guess what? Now that dead weight loss really, 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 really gets extended. And now look, your dead weight loss is equal to what it used to be, okay? Now, instead of over allocating resource production of the good, you're under allocating resource produ production of the good. This dead weight triangle has flipped over here. Again, this was a per unit tax that was 2x the per unit externality. You're not doing any more harm or good. You're just, you're not, you're getting the same amount of dead weight loss as before. Now, you can probably see you're probably definitely ahead of me by now in the video. If that tax was bigger, bigger than what? 2x, right? This tax, this is how big that per unit tax is, which is 2x my negative externality. If it was more than that, if it was something like that, right? 
point i don't know three or something you can see that dead weight loss is now definitely bigger than it used to be okay so when are you going to do more harm than good if you make the per unit tax more than 2x the per unit externality now i did say i was going to shift some curves i've been using the tax wedge this whole time as a modeling tool so let's go ahead and shift the curves and so the idea when we shift the curves all right is that I'm shifting that supply curve closer to the MSC, okay? By adding the tax onto the marginal private cost, right? So when you shift that curve, when you add the tax onto the MPC, you're making them internalize it. So our goal would be to get it so that the supply with tax, which is equal to the MPC original plus the per unit tax, right? Is equal to each other. So that would have shifted this line right there let me grab my ruler here it would have shifted this line all the way to there and if that was the case and i made that per unit tax equal to the size of the externality i'm making them internalize that cost but if that tax is now too big that supply curve now begins to move left of the MSC, the supply curve begins to move left. Maybe a better way to say it is the MPC with per unit tax now starts moving above the M MSC. And that's okay for a little while, but until you get to 2X, once that MPC plus tax gets a full amount above that MSC, now if you tax it anymore, you're gonna cause more harm than good, right? So, what do we want to do? We want to get our market participants to internalize the cost of the externality, right? We want them to feel the full cost, okay? So the market gives us the right allocation of resources to the production of the good. How we do that is with per unit taxes. And we're gonna do good even if we miss the per unit tax, even if it's not the exact same size as the per unit externality. In fact, we can overtax or undertax as long as it is less than 2x the per unit externality, which is good news. We have a good, nice margin of error, right? Half the size, great, and you're getting rid of more than half the dead weight loss. 1.5 the size, no problem. You're still getting rid of more than half of the dead weight loss. But you don't want to tax more than 2x the size of per unit externality. Hope that made sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.